we're analyzing the Cigna Group stock ticker CI to see if Cigna's a great business on sale. Right now, Cigna makes up 6% of Michael Burry's US listed portfolio that shows up on his 13F. Cigna is also 3% of Chris Davis's portfolio. He's a Berkshire Hathaway director. You have two very different value investors with two very different approaches, both interested in the business. Out of the ordinary for most Michael Burry businesses, Cigna has been a long-term compounder. Is Cigna truly a high-quality business that's on sale? We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Cigna. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Cigna for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Cigna stock performance. Right now, Cigna trades for $273.83 per share. Year to date, their stock price is down 16%. Cigna also pays a 1.7% dividend yield that would be in addition to these returns in their stock price. In the last five years, it's a different story. Cigna's compounding at 9.5% annually. In the last 10 years, they're compounding at 13.5% annually. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, Cigna stock price compounds at just under 13% annually. Again, their average dividend yield throughout this time is in addition to these returns. From their lows during the global financial crisis, Cigna stock price is up nearly 20 times. Right now, Cigna trades $33 above their 52-week low. They're down almost $70 from their 52-week high. Only 1.3% of their shares are sold short. Cigna is a very big business. They have a nearly $80 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Cigna? Cigna primarily provides pharmacy benefit management and health insurance services. Its PBM services, which were greatly expanded by its 2018 merger with Express Scripts, are mostly sold to health insurance plans and employers. Its largest PBM contract is the Department of Defense, and it recently won a deal with top-tier insurer Senti. In healthcare insurance and other benefits, Cigna mostly serves employers through self-funding arrangements, but it also operates in government programs such as Medicare Advantage. The company operates most Mostly in the United States, with 19 million medical members covered as of the end of March of 2023. Cigna has a storied history and can trace its roots all the way back till 1792. That's an old business. With this background about Cigna, it's time to get into the numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this would let us build in some margin of safety based off the quality of the business. Cigna's returns on capital for most of these years have been just slightly above average. They're very steady at around 9.5%. This makes sense as a regulated insurance company. When we average their returns out, Cigna earns about 8.6% return returns on capital in a given year. While just slightly above average, this is below the benchmark we're looking for, meaning this is an X on metric number one for Cigna. Metric number two, we're looking for growth in the business. We want to see growth in their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows up until today. This metric is all or nothing. All three have to be up for this to be a check. Cigna greatly expanded its business through its Express Scripts acquisition in 2018. Pharmacy companies typically process a lot of revenue and have low margins. They make their money through high turns. This is supported here through the company's numbers. Their revenues have grown two and a half times. That's the same with their earnings and their free cash flows have nearly tripled. This is huge growth, a huge check on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth in the last five years. This looks at Cigna from the view of an individual shareholder. In this time, we just learned their earnings have grown by two and a half times, but Cigna's diluted existing shareholders by 23%. Looking at their shares outstanding, they issued a ton of shares for this acquisition. Since then, they've been steadily buying back. Right now, they have just 300 million shares outstanding, but they bought back about 80 million shares in the last four years alone. Even with the shareholder dilution, their earnings growth is outpacing this, this is a check on metric number three. A similar situation in metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years. Cigna's free cash flows have nearly tripled, which outpaces their 23% shareholder dilution. This is another check on metric number four. Recapping where we stand currently, Cigna has three checks and only one X through four metrics. 
During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want Cigna's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow they produced in the last five years. Cigna added on debt in 2018 for their Express Scripts acquisition. Since then, they've been paying this down. Cigna ended their last fiscal year with $25.5 billion in net debt. Right now, they brought this down a little bit. It's at $24.6 billion of net debt. In the last five years, Cigna has produced $34.3 billion of free cash flow. Their free cash flows have really spiked since their 2018 acquisition. That's not even fully encompassing the earnings power of their business over this time. Even still, they're able to comfortably support their net debt position. This is a big check on metric number five. In their last 12 months, Cigna's produced $10.2 billion of free cash flow. They'd be able to pay off all of their net debt with only two and a half years of their current free cash flows. That's a very strong financial position for the business. Before we get into the first of two different ways that we'll be estimating a value for Cigna, it's time for our bonus. As our bonus, we're looking at Cigna's dividend profile. Right now, Cigna pays a 1.7% dividend yield. We want to see that they've supported their dividends using their free cash flows in the last five fiscal years. This has been the case. Cigna paid very small dividends up until 2020. Starting in 2021 and carrying on since then, they've dramatically increased their dividend payouts. The company's been growing their dividends. They've easily supported their dividends using these free cash flows. That's the case currently. While this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance, it's no guarantee for the future, though Cigna's dividend looks to be covered by their cash flows. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Cigna's average five-year free cash flows divided by their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we'll be estimating Cigna's fair value. Right now, Cigna has a $104 billion enterprise value. This accounts for both their market cap and their net debt position, giving a view of Cigna similar to it being a private company. In the last five years, we learned Cigna's produced 34.3 billion dollars worth of free cash flow, meaning in an average year, they produce about $6.86 billion of free cash flow. When that is divided by the $104.5 billion enterprise value, we get about a 6.6% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, Cigna's produced $10.2 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their $104.5 billion enterprise value, we get a 9.7% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of these are well above the yield of the 10-year treasury. They're coming in above that risk premium as well, meaning this is a check on metric number six for Cigna. Don't just run out and go buy the business. We want to come to a more concrete estimate of their fair value per share. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze the Cigna group, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to an estimate of their fair value per share. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with a three-year average of Cigna's free cash flows and using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these are accurate or not for the business. Cigna has not been that predictable of a company in its past, especially due to some of these acquisitions. If we assume they grow the average of their free cash flows in their last three fiscal years by just under 10% for the next 10 years, then in the following decade that this growth rate would be cut in half and they'd be growing these at just under 5% annually, we won't be adding in the company's tangible book value as that's likely skewed based off the company's recent acquisition and how accounting is done for their share buybacks. If we're seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett's looking for in addition to his market of safety requirements. From today's valuations, it looks like an estimate of the Cigna Group's fair value per share is around $260. That's down about $14 from their current stock price. That's well within the range of where they've traded within the last year. The company also traded below this price during periods of the first quarter when Michael Burry was buying into the business. There are some other key factors you want to be mindful of. Again, Cigna has had low business predictability in its past. That could also be the case into the future. This discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based off their free cash flows. It already counts their dividend yield. Their stock price would not be appreciating by this full 15% amount. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll talk about our final rating for Cigna, but we have to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative aspects of this business are just as important. What are they? 
Looking at the factors supporting a potential long thesis, number one, Cigna's organic earnings growth prospects look solid both with and without capital allocation activities, such as share repurchases. Number two, with its strong medical cost trend history and goal to reduce that trend to the low single digits, Cigna should be able to benefit from continued enrollment gains in the more profitable commercial segment. Number three, combining with Express Scripts gave Cigna more tools to help clients control their healthcare costs, and they have significant cross-selling opportunities across their respective books of business. But we'd be remiss if we didn't cover the negative aspects as well, looking at the factors supporting a potential short thesis. Number one, with questionable benefits and transparency for end users, some pharmacy benefit management practices such as rebates and spread-based pricing could be prohibited, creating potential profit headwinds. Number two, Cigna faces some client concentration risk, particularly in its Evernorth PBM business, where the Department of Defense is its largest client and Sentney is coming on board. Number three, healthcare reform will likely remain a recurring political topic until universal affordable coverage is achieved in the United States, and Cigna stock may experience volatility if scenarios that threaten its prospects gain traction. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors of the business. Now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing the Cigna Group stock ticker CI, we learn the company is owned by two esteemed value investors who have very different time horizons. Cigna's got a lot of factors going its way. It's experienced huge growth in the last five years. Even if they've diluted their shareholders, they've been aggressively repurchasing shares since 2019. While adding on some debt for their Express Scripts acquisition, the company produces more than enough free cash flow to comfortably support this. They've also supported dividends, especially a growing dividend since 2021. They're beginning to return turn capital to shareholders. One of the only knocks against the business was because of its just above average returns on capital. While not great, those are slightly above average, but they were below our benchmark. It's worth reiterating this analysis isn't financial advice. Based on its free cash flow to enterprise value yields, Signal looks potentially attractive. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, from today's valuations, if you believe those assumptions and are seeking a 15% rate of return, it looks like an estimate of Cigna's fair value per share is around $260. The company was last at those levels just in the beginning of June in 2023. It was below that in the tail end of the first quarter when Michael Burry could have been buying into the business. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, Cigna looks like an exceptional candidate for further research. Again, this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decision. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about Cigna, and let me know what business you want me to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about Cigna with me and have a great day.